might be fun to just get some energy moving, do a little Qigong practice together. So you can stay seated if you want to, but if you're comfortable, please rise. And what I'd like you to do is just have your feet about shoulder width apart. And I want you to align yourself around the vertical axis. That is a very fancy way of saying stand up straight. <laughs> Good. And then what I want you to do is soften your eyes so you can see all the other beautiful souls in this room. And now feel the weight of your jaw and feel the weight of your shoulders. But keep your body aligned around the vertical axis, eyes soft. And you notice that as you feel the weight of your jaw and you feel the weight of your shoulders, <sighs> they relax. Because yeah. if I say relax, we don't know how to do that necessarily. But if you feel the full weight of your jaw and your shoulders while being aligned around the vertical axis, ah, they relax. Eyes soft. And I want you to just be aware of your breathing. Follow a breath in through your nose all the way down into your belly. And let it out again in your own time. Now, you're going to use your imagination. You don't have to actually believe this. Just use your imagination. I want you to bounce like this, and I want you to imagine that you are sucking up Earth energy. <laughs> Suck up Earth energy. This is the energy that grows plants and trees. It's very nurturing Earth energy. Draw it up through the soles of your feet up into your belly. Oh, this is a good Earth energy group. OK, now we're going to put our left foot forward. And we're going to do fire energy. And you can do this in a chair with us. And we're going to move forward like this. And then we're going to move back like this. Your eyes need to be really fiery and alive. And as we come forward, we're going to say, Sa! Everybody. Sa! 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 Sa on your toes for air energy. Oh, air energy. It's so floaty and new agey. Love the air energy. Good. And then water energy, washing away any static stress, tension in your body, just washing it out of all those cells. Oh, water energy. So wonderful. And then I'm going to shake your hands like this, reach up, and just breathe out all together. And again. Ah, one more time. Ah, let's do it all again. Earth energy, suck it up. Ah. This time it's going to be right foot forward. Fire energy all together. Sa, more intensity. Sa, 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 sa air energy. Oh, it's just so floaty. Look at, isn't that wonderful? All this great air energy. And then water energy. Oh, let it wash away any stress, any tension, feeling so much better. And then we just do a gentle shake, reach up and ha, ha, ha. Now pat your belly with a big belly laugh. Oh, ha, 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 ha. Thank you very much. Have a seat. So. I first learned how to juggle many years ago. I saw someone do it, and I thought it was incredibly beautiful. It looked to me like moving sculpture. So I went up to this really great juggler, and I asked him to teach me. But it turns out that he was not as good a teacher as he was a juggler, because you know what he told me? He said, take these three balls, throw them up, don't let any of them drop. <laughs> Did you ever get an instruction like that in the course of your life? Well, the thing is, I really wanted to learn, so I tried really hard. What happened? I failed. Balls kept dropping. I would have given up. But I decided I had to find a better way to learn how to juggle. And it worked. I Actually, when people ask me how I learned to juggle, if I don't tell them the story that I just 
told you, I tell them the one I'm about to tell you. I tell them I was walking down the street one day, and I saw these balls going round in the infinity pattern, so I stood behind them, and I've been there ever since. <laughs> but my insight into the better way is what I want to share with you, and we're going to do this on two levels. One, as we learned earlier today, it turns out that juggling is one of the activities Professor Arnie Mays study, Regensburg University, 15 minutes of practice a day, three months, that measurably, measurably develops the brain. The, the CNN Reuters headline around the world was juggling improves brain power. So we know it's a really great exercise for your brain. You'll also be able to amaze your friends at parties. But it's also a wonderful metaphor. The process of learning how to juggle gives us a wonderful metaphor for learning anything we want to learn. Because learning anything new, and life in general requires us to metaphorically keep a lot of balls up in the air and not get too upset when they drop. So if you reach into your really cool mind and potential bags, if you haven't done so already, you will please extract your juggling ball. It's also a stress ball. We're multitasking. So watch carefully. I'm going to use, can you see my two tennis balls here? And I have my green stress ball like the one you have. What I want you to do is just watch the green one. Can you see it? Keep your eye on it the whole time. Right? What is it doing? All it's doing is going back and forth like this. That's all it is. So what we're going to start with is practicing with one ball. But begin by aligning yourself around the vertical axis, feeling the weight of your jaw and your shoulders, softening your eyes. You can do this either sitting or standing at your seat. And jugglers talk about a box of space, the bottom plane of which is at about the level of your navel. Your hands rest on the bottom plane, elbows in close to your body. The ball from your right hand is going to go to a point slightly to the left of center of the top of the box, such that when you hit that point, the ball is going to land in your left hand. The ball from your left hand is going to go to a point slightly to the right of center, such that when you hit that point, the ball will land in your right hand. OK, so one ball juggling. Where do you look? Where are your eyes focused? In the middle, and they stay soft. Other key coaching tip, make sure you keep breathing while you do this. <laughs> OK, so practice one ball for about a minute, starting now. <laughs> right, folks, thank you. Give a good squeeze to your stress ball and have a seat. <laughs> you are doing so brilliantly with one that I'm going to show you how to do two. And the secret of two is that it's a lot like one. So with one ball, we toss it back and forth like this. And with two, it's going to look like this. One, two. One, two. So if you put a tracer on that, you would see that it makes the logo of a ubiquitous hamburger establishment. Okay? Now, here's what I do not want you to do. This is not it. No. No, 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 no. Don't want you to do that, please. I want you to do this. And to make it even simpler, we're going to do this exercise. People are saying, how are we possibly going to teach us how to juggle when we only have one ball? But there's obviously a method to the madness. We are going to do two with a partner. And when, 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 when I was talking to Beth, I was talking to, you know, to the mind and potential, potential people, and I was saying about, you know, they said, would you teach everybody to juggle? I said, well, yes, I will, but I insist on having a beautiful, statuesque, Olympic gold medalist <laughs> help me. So Carrie coming up. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Give her a round of applause. Fantastic. OK, so Carrie and I are going to work as, as, as a team. In the first phase of the exercise, I'm the juggler. You'll be my partner and helper. In the second phase, you'd be the juggler. I'd be your Go partner ahead. and 
helper. So you're going to all be doing this in a minute. So what I'm going to do, and we can all do this together as I do it, I'm going to align around the vertical axis. I'm going to feel the weight of my jaw and my shoulders, soften my eyes. Oh, make sure I'm still breathing. Right? Then I'm going to picture in my mind's eye exactly where I want the balls to go, just like I bet you pictured whacking that volleyball right into that empty space. So I'm going to picture just where I want the balls to go. Then I'm going to throw one, two, and I'm not even going to try to catch them because my partner is going to pick them up for me <laughs> and place them back in my hand. Do you, think, do you think you can drop both balls? Do you think they can do it? I think they can do it. Think they can do yeah. it. OK, so the first part of the exercise, throw them both up. Don't even try to catch them. Focus on the throw and your own poise. Second thing we're going to attempt is picture where you want them to go in space. This time I'm going to throw one, two. I catch the first one. I'm not worried about the second one because my partner is there for me. Obviously, the next phase of the exercise, I aim to hit those two points in space. If they land on my hands, great. If not, they drop. No problem, because my partner's there to pick them up for me. Let's give her another fantastic round of applause for a great job of helping. Thank you so much. You are so wonderful. Thank you, love. So you might say to yourself, wait a minute. Juggling is about catching the balls, not dropping them. I want to get results in my life. I mean, it's all fine and well, this mindfulness process stuff, but I want to get results. So, well, just look for a moment at the three ball pattern. Look at my left hand. What is my left hand doing? What is my right hand doing? Can you do this with your hands? Go ahead, do it with me in perfect harmony. It's easy, isn't it? <laughs> what makes this so easy? <laughs> Pardon me? <laughs> this is Australia. What did you say? <laughs> well, I have them. and. It's still easy. So what makes it so easy? What makes it so easy? Practice of what? What's more important, the catch or the throw? The throw 100%. In the early phases of your juggling career, which this is for most of you, the most important element in your learning is your alignment around the vertical axis. It's your own poise, and it's a focus on the throw. If I throw the balls to the same place every time, where do they land? Same place. If I start throwing them to different places, yes, it gets much harder, but we'll get to that later. So for now, for now, you want to focus on throwing the two balls, hitting those two points in space, let them drop. Your partner's going to pick them up for you. Then see if you can catch one. Then see if you can catch two. No worries, mate. If you don't catch two, you let them drop. Your partner picks them up for you. We're going to do this for just about four minutes. So it's two minutes each way. So I'll call you back together in four and a half minutes. Find a partner. You have two balls between you. Throw them, drop them, have fun, go. How many people succeeded in dropping both balls? Well done. 100% success rate. How many people discovered that despite careful instruction to the contrary, either you or your partner did this anyway? Are you ready? Are you ready for a Kairos moment? I'm serious, because. This is, this is great. You know, juggling, we're having fun. This is part of why I love to share juggling with people is it immediately brings out the childlike quality. I do this with corporate executives all over the world. They start laughing and having a great time. And then you can get them much more open to learning and enjoying themselves. So it's also very serious, however, because when we want to learn something new, we've learned a lot about neuroplasticity today and the importance of learning new things. And, believing in yourself and your capacities. Now you know your brain is designed to improve as you get older. 
But it's still, nevertheless, we still, if you've always wanted to play a musical instrument, if you've always wanted to learn a new language, if you've always wanted to learn to dance the tango, if you want to learn Tai Chi, whatever you want to learn, it does, it really helps to have a learning strategy that's a little more sophisticated than the one my juggling teacher gave me, which was don't make any mistakes. And my corporate clients say, well, innovate, just don't cost the business anything by trying. And that's not, that's not how it works. So if you find yourself actually or metaphorically in life, attending to do one thing, you were intending to do this, and then you found yourself doing that. And for a lot of people, you're doing this and you didn't even know you're doing it. That's why trying harder doesn't always work. Because you can try harder to do <laughs> the thing you don't want to do. See, you probably didn't notice you were doing this until your partner told you. And some people say, no, I'm not. This is the right way to do it. <laughs> and we can't help those people. Do you know how many coaches does it take to change a light bulb? Only one, but the light bulb has to want to change. <laughs> but if you want to change, you want to learn, and you notice that you're doing something different than what you had intended, a lot of us grew up with the notion, OK, that's a mistake, that's bad, that's wrong, I'm no good, I have no hand-eye coordination, I'll get this, what's the matter with me, and that whole litany of things. And it's just not useful. So I'm going to suggest a reframe in those moments in life from now on when you catch yourself doing something different than what you intended. You're going to say, how fascinating. <laughs> how fast. Let's say it all together just to practice. How fascinating. Because if you think about it, it really is fascinating. You intended to do one thing, and your body goes ahead and does something else. Have you ever seen yourself on a video in a training situation? Presentations, for example. Isn't it shocking to notice that you're doing something so different than what you thought you were doing? And if we had video on, video on you all the time, wouldn't that be true? So life is fascinating. There's constant opportunity to discover clarity between what we thought we were doing and what we actually are doing. And if we take this playful, childlike, open, fascinated attitude, it makes learning so much more fun, which is particularly important because I'm going to show you how to do three balls. <laughs> now, wait a minute. I detected something we in the trade call a negative psychophysical preconception. <laughs> I mean, after hearing Sam today and the other fantastic lineup of, of speakers, I know that, that you're able instantly now to reframe your attitude. So I'm about to make that announcement again. You have a chance to react differently. We are about to learn three balls. Yeah. Ho, ho. How about four? Yeah. Five balls. Flaming clubs, chainsaws. OK, calm down, calm down, calm down. OK, now the thing about three, the thing about three is that it's a lot like two. Oh, and I noticed some of you, some of you did exactly what I asked. I love it. This is what's great about mindfulness sensitive audiences. They sometimes actually do what you ask them to do. So some of you were really aligned around the vertical axis, and you really did. Oh, pay attention to your breathing and soften your eyes and feel the weight of your jaw and your shoulders. And you really did look for those two points in space. And you really did focus on the throw. And here's what happened to some of you. It was really sweet. You went like this. <laughs> so, so we started, we started with, whoa, we started with one ball, just tossing it back and forth. Then we threw two and we let them drop. Then we threw two, catch one, two, you attempt to catch them both. Now what we're going to do is two in one hand, one in the other hand. This will be your first toss. This will be your second toss. This will be your third toss. And we are going to throw one, two, three, and let them all drop. Your main goal will be to get a fluid, elegant three ball drop today. <laughs> okay, Just get them out of your hands. That's the key. Once you get them out of your hands, and I'm going to suggest we're going to do this after the formal class finishes as a just optional extra fun activity. You're going to get with two other people should you so choose, because then you'll notice that between you, you have three balls, and then you have two people there to pick the balls up. 
So you're going to throw three and let them all drop. Your partners will pick them up for you. Then you're going to throw three and just catch the first one. You let the other two drop. Partners pick them up for you. Then you're going to throw three, catch the first two, and you will notice that there is only how many balls left in the air? One. And you can all already do one ball, can't you? Say yes. So then all you have to do is let that third ball land in your hand, and you will have completed your first jugulation. <laughs> Be a breakthrough. Another Kairos moment. But I'm getting to know the culture here in Australia, and I know you're not going to be satisfied with just one jugulation, are you? What do you want? More. You want multiple jugulation, don't you? What's the secret to multiple jugulation? Just keep going. Stay present with the process. Keep tossing the balls. Because what happens is, see, if you throw a one, two, three, that's a jugulation. It's a milestone. Celebrate. But then if you want to keep going, you have to make the fourth throw. So throw number one becomes throw number four. It'll be one, two, three, four. And it'll probably drop. Then this one becomes the fifth throw. One, two, three, four, five. And obviously this one becomes the sixth throw, and so on. Moreover, some of you may have noticed that your non-dominant hand tended to shoot the ball out of the box. Did you notice that? that? When you start juggling with three, you look like this. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We call it joggling. The solution to that is to practice standing up against the wall. So there's two kinds of people, those who put everything in two groups and those who don't. And my class from yesterday knows that I'm one of those people who put everything in two groups. And I noticed two different attitudes towards the instructions I gave you. Some people, despite attending mindfulness conferences, are so results focused. They just throw out the vertical axis. They stop breathing. They'll do anything to get the result, and they're like this. <laughs> yeah, all right, I juggled. <laughs> Other people, though, are so into the process. They are breathing. They're becoming one with the ball and the universe. And then when they finally get around to juggling, it looks like this. Because because they're lost in la-la process land and we can't help them. <laughs> what we're after is the human high performance state, which is relaxed focus. It's like that Greek happiness state that Alan was talking about earlier today. It's having the right amount of energy in the right place at the right time. Oh, the other thing I noticed, two different types of people in terms of your attitude towards letting other people help you. Because I said, let your partner pick the balls up. Some of you went like this. That's right, I got it, thank you very much. <laughs> right, mate, back off, this is my space, thank you. <laughs> but still, still others of you, still others of you have a different attitude, you go like this. If you could shine my shoes and get me a Vogue Clicquot while you're down there, and you know who you are. So, so get together with your friends and experiment with letting go of three balls. And let's finish with a little moment of contemplation. Just m contemplate the three ball pattern. It is the infinity pattern, and it represents your infinite potential to create and learn. Thank you so much. God bless. Thank you. Thank you.